guys, Miss Kulkarni here. So we are going to talk about methadone, the opioid, which is in fact used for treating the opioid dependence. Methadone is also used as one of the analgesic. So that's the structure of methadone which we got over here. Before we move further, I want to just go over one more thing. These are structures of morphine and codeine. Some of the opiates which we talked about earlier, they are called also as narcotics. And they work good as painkiller agents. But they have severe dangerous side effects and one of them is causing the addiction or dependence. So methadone is used for treating that dependence to somewhat extent and we won't go into detail about how it differs from person to person but we're going to talk about some exam questions about methadone. So here is one. We have to write down at least two functional groups found in methadone. Here is something I'm going to tell you. Usually functional groups have some heteroatoms. Those are the special functional groups. So I will keep on looking for some heteroatom apart from carbon and hydrogen and there it is. I find that nitrogen. That means what is surrounding that is our functional group. So this nitrogen is connected to these two methyl groups and also this another branch alkyl group there that tells me that this must be an amine and since there is no hydrogen linked to this nitrogen it must be a tertiary amine. So we got one functional group. How about second one? There is another heteroatom which I see and that is oxygen linked up with carbon. So it's a carbonyl group and what is that called? A carbonyl group separated by two alkyl groups. This is carbon and this is carbon and that must be a ketone. Even though it's asking only two functional groups, I can see another one there. These are two rings and the rings are called as benzene rings or the group is called as phenyl group. So there you go. We got all the functional groups present. Let's move on to our next question on methadone. And this is about identifying the chiral carbon center present. We had discussed chiral carbon center in Taxol and Dexamethasone videos. So you should be familiar with that. It's a carbon which has got four different groups attached to. And I can tell you if you keep on looking around, you can easily spot that carbon atom which is chiral center. That carbon atom has one group is CH3, one group is this dimethylamino group, one of them is this big structure which we got there and what is not shown in the compound is there is hydrogen there. So that must be the chiral center having four different groups attached to that carbon. Makes it very special. Moving on. This is to write the equation for treating methadone with HCl and then we have to also write down how it will affect the properties. Okay, here is something I'm going to tell you. The nitrogen group which is present over here, that's very easy to get protonated. Here is what I mean. That's my methadone compound and if I am having HCl treated with that, that hydrogen which you got over here, that can move to the nitrogen right over here. So if that happens, you end up getting NH. And now the nitrogen got extra hydrogen, so it will have a positive charge. And then this chloride which you got is negative, that will remain floating as in chloride ion. So what we got was methadone and it will be chloride as a salt. What did we achieve with this? This technically turns into an ionic compound and ionic compounds are soluble in water. So we increase the water solubility. And what happens when there is a higher water solubility? We also increase the bioavailability. And if it's easily bioavailable, then what is the treatment plan? we can actually administer this medicine orally. 
because it can be absorbed easily into the bloodstream. If you look at both the structures, they are slightly different, but they're also somewhat similar. And I'm telling you right now, they will bind to receptor exactly same way. So we know morphine is a strong analgesic. That means methadone also will be a strong, powerful analgesic. Let me tell you one more thing. Methadone also is called as dolophene. Morphine and dolophene. Does that rhyme together? <laughs> All right. Now our task is to find out the functional groups present in both methadone and morphine which are likely involved in binding. What do you see similar in both and unique? I can see this group which we marked as tertiary amine and we also see a tertiary amine amino group in morphine also. So that must be one of the binding site. What is the other one? We also got here benzene ring and we got of course two benzene rings in uh, methadone. We call it phenyl groups. We also got one benzene ring in morphine. Second one is not a benzene ring. Just keep that in mind. But benzene rings also give some property, some structure, rigidity. And the third thing which is interesting is there is oxygen present as a carbonyl group in methadone. Whereas in morphine, we got this oxygen as an ether. And both the groups will give similar polarity and some other properties. So now you know which groups are effectively binding for methadone and morphine. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you again in next video. Make sure stay tuned. Bye-bye.